Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about forms and this is for the form exercise. So here's the deal, you are at this point in your career a front-end web designer. So you are mostly concerned, in fact you're a hundred percent concerned with look and feel. And most of the time a web designer would work in partnership with a programmer, a CIS person, to do all of the back end of the website. So the back end might be databases, the back end might be some coding in PHP and JavaScript. And um, I want to introduce you to two concept, clients, concepts, client side and server side. So everything we are doing is client side. So client side means that the client is the user's computer. And everything we do just displays on the user's computer, but we don't have any interaction, for example, um, collecting credit card information, for example, that would pose a security risk. Well, here's the good and bad news about forms. Forms are, will send email, but there's no way to send email directly from an HTML format form. And this sucks, but think about it this way, if you were allowed to do that, it would reveal the visitor's email to anybody in the universe, and that would be a security risk. So when I say everything on your website is, is client side, it also means everyone can see it and it, the data is vulnerable. So server side and server side scripting processes the form, and that's a developer's job. And you can get scripts on PHP that live on the server and don't pose a security risk to the client. So now we're going to just work on the, the form's look and feel. So the examples that I'm showing you today are all HTML. I'm going to ask you to make them pretty with some CSS, but we're just going to look at the HTML tags. All right, there is one workaround. However, this workaround also sucks. So I can use the tag mail to colon you at your website.com, but the issue with that is that it opens up your client's email program like Outlook or Mail on the Mac. And so that involves server side and it also gives the gives the it takes them out of your website. It takes them into their own mail program, and that's not a good thing. So it's there if you really need it, but most of the time we're not going to be using that. So let's look at some basic tags for form, and then we're going to start a form on our own. So the tag form, just like the tag table, starts a form in HTML, and then we need some input. So you use input, and the attribute is type, just like A and href is the attribute, a is the tag, href is the attribute. So input is the tag and type is the attribute. So here are our three basic attributes, text. So input type text gives you a one line text input field which defaults to 20 characters and you can override this and specify more characters and more lines. Uh, radio buttons, so allowing you to, to select one choice and submit so that would give you an option to submit the form. So the type would be get or post. Okay, so let's look at some other attributes for form. So we have the name. What do you want the form to be named? You need a name for all of your form elements so that your programmer can refer to them when they are working in PHP or whatever they're using to create a script that processes your phone, your form. And type, which we already talked about, text, radio, submit, and size. So size is the attribute that changes the size of that 20 character text limit and it can be whatever you want. All right, so let's look at a real simple form, and I think we might as well look at this in brackets. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and preview this, and we'll break it down. Okay, so this is very easy. 
So as you can see, I just have an H2 tag here, email Dr. Lisa Sharp. And I have the form action mail to. So this is our deprecated action. Okay, and now we have, so this is, this is the, this is non-standard right here. This is the, um, this is what we don't want to use. I just wanted you to see what it looks like. So form action mail to lisa.sharp at greenville.edu. That's not going to do a darn thing. Okay, but this, we're going to hand this off to our CIS people for processing. So I have name right there, and you can see I have a break tag, and then I have my input. The type is text with quotation marks, and the name is name. And then I have another break tag, email, and I could I could put the size attribute in there because that's really not a lot of characters for a name. So let's put the size attribute in there. Size equals 50. Okay, let's put the equal sign in, not the plus. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do that for my other form here. So the type input type is text, the name is mail, and the size is 50. And then I have their comments. So input type is text, the name is comment, uh, the size here is 50, and then I have a submit button. And you can see that I also, I, we didn't talk about this, but the value of that submit button is just called send. And I could just as easily call it submit form or anything else. I could call it submit form at your own risk. I could call it anything. So let's save. There it is, submit form. And now all of my fields are the same size. Okay, so that's the basic form. So I have the form tag. And here I have a closing tag for the form. And I have my basic HTML5 structure. So doc type HTML on line 1, the HTML tag opening on line 2, closing on line 18, well, excuse me, on line 19, the body tag, what's visible on the web page. And notice I do not have a tag. What is it? That's right, people. It's the head tag. So let's put that in. Remember HTML5? gives you a lot of freedom and it can it will absolutely display without a head tag but that's not really good practice so we're going to put that head tag in so we're going to put a title forms in html5 and we're going to enclose that within two title tags There, now we are compliant. So we have HTML, we have our body tag and the closing body tag on line 21. We have our head tag on line four, closing head tag on line six. And then on line five, we have our title. And then we have our email and then we start our form. Okay, so like I said, this mail to Lisa Sharp at greenville.edu is not going to do anything on its own. We need a programmer to write a script for it. So the method is post. So in other words, we want to send the email and it's going to post, it's going to send as plain text. Okay, and then we have everything else that we just did. So that's an extremely simple form. So now let's go to another example. Now I decided that I was going to make these examples very simple so that we could practice each one and then we can make a more complex form. So I'm going to put my head tag in there. Forms in HTML5, HTML5 radio buttons. Okay, so save that and here it is. Example form using radio buttons, male, female, or other. So let's look at that. So here we just have the form tag, closing tag for the form. We have our input type equal to radio, and the name is gender, the value is male. So let's just relabel these. Let's say the name is um, age, and the value is 18 to 21. And this 
attribute here, checked, tells us which one is checked by default. So input type rate radio name age. I should make that in all small letters. And the value is going to be 12 to 18. Age eighteen twenty one, and guys, tell me where I'm starting to go wrong here. And we'll do age, and we'll val we'll do other for age. Okay, why didn't it change? Well, because we didn't change. Remember what is in between the tags. So, check this out. Input type is another singleton tag. It does not require a closing tag, but it does require some text. So that's actually visible on the website. So we're going to call that 18 to 21. And here my value, I think I'll make it 21 to 25. And then we have other. So you can see how those radio buttons change. We need to put something in for the text. So let's let's actually break that down a little bit more so you can see that more easily. So input type equals quote radio unquote. The name is age, the value is 21 to 25, and then we end that tag. It does not require a closing tag. And then we put in what we want to display on the screen, and I have a break tag in there just to separate them. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And now, oops, let's see. Now we want to talk about a couple other things that can make your form a little bit more attractive, actually, and functional. Okay, so those two things are field sets and legends. So the title of this form is Grouping Form Data with a Field Set. So I have a little paragraph describing what the field set is. It's used to group related data in a form, and the legend element makes a caption. This is the caption, personal information. And look here, I have some, I have first name, and then I have a value, and I have a last name, of course, this could be anything. We're not going to make it actually Mickey Mouse. But let's start our form. So our form action is action underscore page dot PHP. And you would just substitute whatever your web developer um, CIS person wanted you to place in there. So the, remember, the mail to link doesn't really work. Um, it is just a workaround when you absolutely positively can't do anything else. and um, too many disadvantages to use. But field set's kind of nice. So legend, personal information, let's make the legend something else. Let's make the legend um, favorite movie. So input type text, and we have the, the, va the name attribute as first name, so we'll call that movie one. And we'll have the value be favorite movie. OK. And we have a break tag there to separate first name and last name. So here we have the, see, there we go. The field set is now named favorite movie. And then instead of first name, I have to change that to what is your favorite movie. What is your favorite movie? Okay, so now all of that, so our legend right here gives us favorite movie, and then we're going to switch that up, and we're adding some text, input type text, value favorite movie. We could also add a size attribute for this but we are going to skip that because you already know how to do that. Then I have a break tag and we're going to take out the word last name and we'll say favorite band. 
quote, or favorite band, semicolon, input type text, name, last name, we'll say favorite band. And the value is certainly not going to be mouse, it's going to be what? It's going to be, here we're going to put this, what is your favorite band? So we can be consistent. And we'll put in favorite band. So that just gives your user some hint as to what they're supposed to type in there. So there we go. And then we have input type submit and value of submit. And that ends our field set, which also ends our form. Okay, so forms can be styled with CSS. I want to keep this a short video because you all know how to create an external style, uh, style sheet now. And what I'd like for this format um, exercise is for you to create something with an external, field, uh, external style sheet so that you are able to control a little bit more of these forms. All right, so I kept it short, kept it sweet. It's all easy, and you can look to your uh, programming partner. All right, one other thing I want to talk about, actions, methods, and targets. All right, so we, had, we saw some of these in practice. The action attribute tells the browser what to do when the form is submitted. So here we have form action, and it's referencing a fake PHP script. So it's going to look for something that's clients, it's that's server side. And the target attribute will open a new window if you want that. So let's put that in there. Target equals blank. Okay, that will open up your form in a new window, and that's kind of handy. So if you don't want users to be taken out of your website, or if for some reason you want to open up your form or any HTML page, for example, in a separate window, you would use a target of blank. So by default, um, let's look at the possibilities here. By default, it goes to self, which means it stays on the same page. So target underscore self. There's also one for inherit, but the most commonly used one is blank. So that opens up a blank page with your form on it, and that's kind of nice. So for any link in HTML, any link at all, you can use a target of blank if you'd like to open up another window. Okay, so that's the purpose of that. All right. So, and here we have that in my PowerPoint. Uh, target will also open up any, it'll be used for any hyperlink. Okay, method tells the browser what to do, get or post to submit the form data. So are we getting data or are we posting data? Okay, so get information is going to be shown in the browser window. It's not as secure. Post does not submit, does not display the form data, and so it's more secure. All right, so what happens if we don't have a programmer handy when we want to make a form? Well, the very best answer I have for you is called WordPress, and we're going to go over that later on in this class. However, you could also use a Google form or a Jot form. And if we, let's, if we want to take a quick look at that, you can. So Google Forms and Jot Forms are very easy to create, and we just embed them into our web page. Okay, so that is as much as we can do with forms in HTML. So there's a form assignment. If you guys could complete that and make your form look pretty, I would be a very happy camper. All right, good night, everyone, and we're going to do that form exercise.